we were already, well, I already called the meeting, we're calling the public session to order. Um, we've already gone through a non-public session, so we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Charlene, would you lead us? Yes, I will. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, Dr. Nelson. Um, so first we have the acceptance of minutes. Um, I saw nothing um, that needed to be edited. They were excellent. Thank you, Kathy. Does anyone else have any edits? None, Charlie? So you usually always have at least one or two. I guess these were the most impeccable meeting minutes. I guess Kathy minutes. did an exemplary job, as she usually does. <laughs> Excellent. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to accept the June 3rd meeting minutes um, as presented? So, so, second. Moved by Mary, seconded by Dr. Jim. Kathy, when you're ready, could you please call the roll? Tom? What? Dr. Jim? Yes. Guy? Yes. Jim Hittman? Yes. Mary? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. Dana? Yes. Bruce. Aye. Um, next, we have the manifest approval. Um, the manifest tonight is in the amount of $4,980,083.29. Uh, would someone make a motion to accept tonight's manifest? So moved. Second. Moved by Jim Pittman, seconded by Dr. Beth. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Kathy, when you're ready, could you please call the roll? Tom? Yes. Dr. Jim? Yes. Guy? Yes. Jim Pittman? Yes. Mary? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dr. <coughs> yes. Dana? Yes. Brody? Aye. Okay. Uh, we are now on to public input. Public input is up to a total of 15 minutes, three minutes per individual, unless extended by the vote of the board. Uh, if you would please be respectful and not. Um, have comments directed at the crowd or individuals, please speak to the business on the agenda. Going once, going twice. All right, close the public input and we'll move into the um, public hearing for the acceptance of a donation of a playground from the Wolper Area Children's Center. Um, I will open up the public hearing at, we'll say, 702, um, and I'll recognize Kathy Tatro, Principal of LRTC, to speak. Thank you. I'd like to invite um, Terry Ann Cox, the Executive Director of the of Children's Center, also to join me, if you would please. Um, earlier this year uh, and in previous years, we've been working together with the Children's Center to um, bring to the LRTC a Magic Moments program, which is housed on the LRTC campus, part of Governor Wentworth's system, um, a new playground. Um, a grant was written, uh, playground equipment has been purchased and is um, on for discussion to be accepted as a donation to the Governor Wentworth system. Um, Terry Ann wrote a letter to Dr. Park Parkhaling um, to in give information about what that um, entails and the amount of offering for that and some of the details as to what will be um, moving forward with that. When we met earlier in the spring with um, uh, maintenance and building um, uh, committee, we were able to discuss um, the details of what that playground equipment was um, looking like, and where it was going to be placed, and the materials that were being used, and the company that would be um, installing it. And we also discussed with uh, business um, administration to find out what we needed to do on the protocols for uh, Primax inspections and any of those kinds of things. And I would invite Terry Ann to discuss any further details or questions that you may have um, as related to the donation that she would like to make to government. Do you have any additional comments? I would just first like to say thank you um, to the district. It's been a great collaboration. We celebrated, as I mentioned in the letter, 10 years of magic moments um, at the LRTC. Um, we've had nearly 100 children that have gone through that program. And it's really a great program because not only is it investing in our preschoolers, if you will, or the young children of the community and giving them that early start before they transition to elementary school. It also is in collaboration with Curzon Education. 
And right now, if you've um, kept up with any of the challenges for early childhood education, um, clearly the workforce is in crisis. Um, finding capable and high quality staff um, and young, the next generation, if you will, who are willing to teach young children is actually kind of a challenge. But for us, we see this as an additional benefit to the sector um, because it actually is a pipeline for us as far as future workers. That said, we also want to focus on the children, right? The reason why we're here is to provide that education. And one of the things that, not to be critical, um, but the playground is um, quite simple. Um, if you have the opportunity um, to maybe go by and look, um, there's a sweet little plastic playhouse and there's a sandbox, but really, um, we want to equalize um, all ch or the opportunity for all children in this structure. Um, we'll provide that gross motor skill um, and other um, open development for their play. And we, um, as the licensed provider, um, wanted to proceed forward um, and purchase this equipment and then in keeping with what the letter of said, actually donate it to the district, recognizing that um, you've generously allowed us to, to be on your property. So with that, um, comes the gift and the donation. We can certainly answer any questions that you have, and um, it's actually we're excited to be forward. And with that, we can gain your approval. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Sure. Yes, Tom. Um, Carol, you do one. It's okay. We're here to answer them. Thank you for your thorough investigation in the classrooms. Um, do I just get it right that Magic Moments isn't simply for the playground equipment, but it's the program mm -hmm. in which you interconnect yes. with the yeah. children. That and careers in education. So between the Magic Moments program that is operated on campus and run through the Children's Center, we also have Careers in Ed, which explores beyond um, preschool. Oh, okay. So right. just to um, add a little something to this as well, um, one of the reasons why we would like to move forward with this sooner than later is that we'd like to be able to have the installation done while there are no kids on campus, while there's you know not much traffic back in that area. So because it will um, interfere with bus lanes if we should have to wait until later in the fall. Right. And there's always a weekend that we could install, but that wouldn't be ideal because that would be quite a bit more expensive for us to um, make sure that the company that does this every day um, is available to us. Excellent, Dr. Beth. I do. I, this is wonderful. Um, I do have a question since I'm on the PTO at New Durham and we're playing around on the brain also. Um, <laughs> Is the company that's installing going to do an ADA compliant footing as well? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. yes. And, and that, you know, different than that, of course, you've all experienced the carpenter. That was a community build. Um, we, um, just to make sure, um, because the additional layer is we are licensed by DHHS, Child Care Licensing Unit, and we really feel that it's better to have the company um, install and um, inspect, and then you'll inspect but also make sure everything is compliant. I'll ask to that point. I know the state has a new mandate where it can't be. Um, it, it's in the letter. Mm -hmm. I missed it. OK, yes, okay. we're meeting the state's mandate. I know the state yes. doesn't let us do wood chips anymore. It has Correct. to be um, something that you can be able to wheel on or be able to move easily with like crutches and things of that nature. It's one of the questions that came up in the earlier meeting this spring, and we look forward to um, making those adjustments. In. Yeah. and addressing that concern. Okay. So my only question is the timeline when, when the, after the vote, when, uh, when will it be ready to play on? Um, our goal um, would be that we would install or have access to the playground area um, mid-August. I'm awaiting back from O'Brien um, that they can confirm when their uh, workers can be on site. Um, then, of course, that would allow us about two, you know, it's a tight time frame, mm -hmm. um, but two weeks to make sure that we have the proper absorption, um, and I can also leave with Kathy the child care licensing unit. We have kind of another layer of expectation as far as um, three to five year olds um, and what that, um, uh, how much, um, you know, six inches, ten inches, depending on material. We'll need to get all that in, and then of course have Primax, um, hopefully able to 
be on site because we would want to be able to ribbon cut, if you will, or um, on that day, that first day of school, it'd be great yeah. if our little Magic Moments kids could go out there and come onto the place on that first day, which I believe is September 3rd. Um, so that would be our time frame. <coughs> Thank you. Is there any additional? Yes, Jim. Uh, just a comment because our public and those who will be watching the recording don't have the uh, advantage of having our paperwork. Just like to recognize that the dollar value of this donation is forty-three thousand nine hundred and fifty-five dollars. So it's significant. Wow. Okay. Is there anybody else in the public that would like to speak during the public hearing? I assume not. No one wanted to give public input, but I know you have strong opinions on the Magic Moments playground. <laughs> um, with that, if there's no any other questions, I'll close the public hearing. And um, the motion, is there a recommended motion about that? Yeah. Well, then the motion would be to accept the uh, donation from the Children's Center uh, for a playground in the dollar amount of $43,955. So moved. Oh, <laughs> Dana's gonna second. All right, so you guys want to rock paper scissors? You and Mary? Okay. All right, Mary, motion. Dana seconded. Um, any additional discussion? Hearing none. Kathy, uh, would you please call the roll at your convenience? Tom. Yes. Doctor Jim. Yes. Guy. Yes. Jim Pittman. Yes. Mary. Yes. Charlene. I. Dr. Beck? Yes. Dana? Yes. Brady? Aye. Alright, so we've accepted the you donation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and no band-aids, right? No band-aids. Alright, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Dr. Eric Kelly, would you like to share some additional information? Sure. So the authorization to suspend is something that we bring to the board every summer. We have a, a page here, an original for the board to sign. It authorizes the um, superintendent um, or designees to um, suspend for a maximum up to 10 days um, or following a hearing up to 20 days. Excellent. Um, so the motion would be to um, Grant. So we have it in our paperwork. No. Okay. Well, then the motion would be to grant the superintendent the authorization, the authorization to suspend. So moved. Second. Moved by Jim Pittman. Seconded by Dr. Beth. Is there any additional comments, input, questions? And this is a formality. The state requires us to do this every year. So, um, hearing no additional comments or questions, uh, call. Yes, Dana. I just want to know, I don't want to assume anything, but it looks like you're going to give the principals and the assistant principals the right to go to 10 days. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Beyond 10 would be to the superintendent. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how we've always done it, at least since I've been on the board. Okay. Is there any other questions of clarification? Hearing none, when you're ready, Kathy, could you call the roll? Tom? Yes. Dr. Jim? Yes. Guy? Yes. <coughs> Jim Pittman? Yes. Mary? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. Dana? Yes. Brody? Aye. I'll sign it first and then I'll hand it to you, Guy, and everyone will sign it. Thank you. Yeah. While you're signing that, uh, the next item is school board assurances for grants. So this is so the district can receive uh, federal funds um, and the board authorizes the superintendent, assistant superintendent, business administrator, and director of curriculum um, the um, authorization to sign assurances for all grants and request to and from trust funds. Excellent. So the motion would be to um, authorize the superintendent. We do that. Yeah, so. Um you see at the top of this paper and the top of your meeting packet, it's we, the Governor of Wentworth Regional School Board, authorized Superintendent Caroline R. Kelly, and Assistant Superintendent Heather R. Cummings, Business Administrator Kathy Blennis, and or Director of Curriculum Caitlin Hills, 
actually Dr. Caitlin Mills to sign assurances for all grants and requests to and from trust funds. <coughs> so that would be the motion. Move to grant the authority to et cetera, et cetera. Yes. <laughs> Second. Second. Moved by Jim Pittman. Seconded by Mary Shilrick. Is there any additional discussion? Good. Our names is still. <coughs> Oh, the shades. We missed the eight. We missed the eight. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you for catching that. I, sure. I was looking more at the motion. Less than five minutes. There we go. <laughs> I spelled it right. Well, is there any other comments other than the misspelling of my last name? That's a tough one. There's a lot of vowels. Are we going to <laughs> insert a uh, doctor in front of Caroline Erickelian and Caitlin Hills? Would you guys like us to insert doctor in the motion? Thank you. Sure. Yes, yes. Okay. I'll speak on behalf of it. <laughs> Doctor. And Doctor. All right. Is there any other comments? Does anyone want any other grammatical changes? No grammatical question, but is this also just typical customary in Arizona? Yes. Oh, yeah, we're required by the state to approve these. Thank um, you. Otherwise, they won't be able to right. do these grant assurances. Mm -hmm. so. Um, hearing no other questions or comments, uh, Kathy, when you're ready, could you please call the roll? Tom? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Jim? Yes. Guy? Yes. Jim Pittman? Yes. Mary? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. Dana? Yes. Bertie? Hi. Thank you. Awesome. I'll sign that and then we'll do what we did with the last one. You'll notice, Dr. Beth, this meeting this is the first one after July 1st. It's a lot of clerical things that the state requires us to do to start fiscal year um, begins July 1st. So. I'm asking from the Nazi and my experience. Yeah. Um, next is authority to hire. So you'll recognize this from the last meeting. Um, now that we are having this meeting tonight and not a scheduled meeting in August, um, I'm bringing this proposal to the board again because. Um, we have two months until the next meeting, and during that time, we start our school year. So it is especially um, it would be especially helpful um, to grant the superintendent the authority to hire. And the motion is on the page, Mr. Chair. Yep. I'd like to make the motion, oh, and I, I, I move to grant the superintendent the authority <coughs> to hire between the July and September board meetings except for any new grant funded positions which shall be presented to the board for approval at the September board meeting. And here's a copy of my motion. Okay. Is there anyone who will second that? I'll second. second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion to that? I would like some clarification as what does it mean? What is the motion mean? It's a modified You're modified. Um, yeah. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we have, um, I believe that um, we all received information about a proposed new position that is going to be funded by, um, by some type of grant. And um, it's my understanding that this position will be um, very much assisting the director of curriculum in various things and um, since it's a new position which is grant funded those historically are presented to the board for approval prior to um, you know hiring so it I'm just I'm just sort of trying to codify what we've always done in the past just to make sure that that you know, everybody understands that um, that type of position will need to come to the board. Um, and I would presume that Dr. Hills would make a presentation um, as, she, as she did uh, during COVID when we were using ESTER funds for a new grant funded position. So that's, yeah, does that seem fairly clear? That's, and when you call me about 
not specifically the motion, I didn't anticipate the motion, but when you called me about your concerns with this grant funded position, I agreed I would be more of a mediator in the situation after discussing with the school board's association. That's okay. Um, so, Dr. Eric Kelly, and I assume she, you have a difference of view on, on this. So. Yes, I'm happy to um, share some information on the position. I haven't been asked about the position to be. Um, however, um, and I can share a few things. First, the requirements to um, share with stakeholders vary by grant. So for the ESSER grant, we, uh, for all districts, were required to um, put everything out to our stakeholders. In fact, we still have an ESSER 3 survey out for, um, for those funds. And that is, um, that was a very specific um, uh, uh, requirement for the ESSER grant. So for this district, the math coaches, the curriculum project manager, all of that definitely had to go to the board and to the community. <clears throat> the position that I believe you're referring to here, we have a position, it was just approved by the state, um, I believe in June. Uh, it's for an assessment coordinator. So this is a, a new position that um, uh, the first and foremost uh, require responsibility of this position is for assessment. It's the first um, goal of the academic achievement section of the strategic plan that was just approved in March. Um, the other um, very important uh, responsibility of this position is to help um, us move to a new learning platform, Infinite Campus, next year. <clears throat> this was just finalized in the last couple months. Um, so. This position, we um, we would like to move forward with it before the start of the school year. Um, it's not typically so, and using Title II A funds. So using Title II A funds are, is not something that typically goes before the board. But um, if that's something that the board would like to um, vote on, you could vote on that tonight. We could hold a special meeting within the next few weeks if you'd like to learn more about it or ask more questions about it. Oh, but typically, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Typically, the um, the title grants um, that are entitlement grants, we have to. Um, it is the district's uh, responsibility to allocate those funds toward um, the needs of the district, and that's within the you know within management. That's something that we're required to do. Um, we realize and respect that the district and the board is responsible for governing over sixty million dollars in taxpayer funds. The title grants and IDEA, special education grants, are between two and three million. Those funds are the responsibility of the district to allocate. Um, How much? Some, you if I if I may, some additional context. <coughs> as I called Will Phillips from the school boards association, um, and I asked him, "What do other school districts do?" Um, larger school districts, such as ourselves, tend to let the administration. We have historically let the administration have full purview over the title grant funding. Some smaller school districts, their superintendent, because their title grant funding is a lot smaller, and they might have you know, a smaller board, and they might meet with their superintendent more often, they might only run one school, they might explain the entire budget and have it approved yearly by their school board, or may approve it after the states approve it, after the state department of education approves it throughout the year, you know, slowly allocate that money. So um, if the board wants to change, the way that we deal with these title grant funds, it would be changing an existing precedent, um, but it's not unheard of, but it is not typical of a district our size with this many students and um, you know with this much title grant funding. When I talked to the school boards association, they said usually the best way for the chair to deal with this being the liaison between the board and the superintendent when there's a disagreement over something that's a legal gray area is I'm going to try my best to act as a neutral arbitrator, so I'm going to abstain from the vote, but I'm going to try to hear both sides and facilitate the conversation. Maybe there could be some kind of compromise, or, um, or the board. I mean, if a majority of the board agrees with Charlene's motion, that's what it is. But I think also, as you think, the board should be more involved in the allocation of title grant funds. Is that correct? I, th I think that we need to um, make sure that all of our district stakeholders know exactly what this is going to be for. And I don't think, I'm not sure if Dr. Hills is prepared to make a presentation tonight, and, it, and a presentation by her was not on the agenda. So I'm not sure that that's something that um, 
could be adequately addressed tonight in a public meeting. And I also know that for two years in a row, after, after we brought to the attention of the SAU the fact that prior to asking the taxpayers to pick up the 115,000, or I think it was around 115,000 for the curriculum project manager, including benefits, is that correct? Um, that's what I have in my I think, mind. I think that's about right. It, including yeah. salary and benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, two years in a row, <clears throat> did not receive um, any kind of, of justification once the grant money ran out. And so what I'm trying to do is, is proactively, um, you know, provide the taxpayers the ability to find out more about this position and also for the board to find out more about the position. And I know based on emails we had received from Dr. Hills and Dr. Eric Halian, um, giving us this information, I know that there was in those in the list of of duties for this in, whoever this individual might be, um, there was mentioned um, some of the same kinds of activities that the curriculum project manager was in charge mm -hmm. of of accomplishing, yeah. specifically competency based education at the high school, and so. Um, I, I just feel as if the public needs more information and, I, and could I find out how much we're talking about, how much grant money, because once the grant runs out, then we would be in the same position of having to ask the taxpayers to pick up the funds to continue the position. Okay, okay. well, yeah, if you want to Thank you the for question, asking yeah. that question. I've not been asked that question to date. Um, we are at, we plan to have this position for one year. This is for implementation of a learning platform um, that will take the year next year. It is for um, reporting and assessment, and that is due next year according to the strategic plan. So it's Title IIA funds. This is not something that taxpayers are responsible for. It's from a federal <coughs> grant. Correct. Correct. And how much are we using from that grant? It would depend on the salary, which is not something I have at this time. It depends on where the person qualifies for their salary. So is it going to be someone who is in GUIA so that the, the salary would be determined by track and step? It would not be a GUIA position. A letter contract. Yeah. A letter contract because it's so, a one on So it would be similar to um, what the SAU personnel have? No. It would not be an SAU administrator level. No. We would look at other letter contracts, which are positions that are not covered under a CBA. For, for everyone's clarification, sure. are we treating this like a contracted service? No, it would be an employee of the district. It would still be an employee of the district. Okay. For so, one year under Title IIA, okay. which is so, not usually to the board. Okay, so it would be an employee of the district but not subject to any of the CBAs. Correct. And you don't know how much? Because that would be a personnel question. We would have to um, look at what's fair for that person based on their experience. So we have no idea how much this particular position would cost, and therefore we don't know, you know what that money could be used for if this position weren't approved. It's the Title II A funds are it's allowable to use for positions. And um, it's allowable to be used for um, positions that uh, improve instruction, improve academic achievement, uh, support teachers and professional development. Um, and that's what we identified that we need. We it's true. There are pieces um, and, and I've heard from this board that the board is looking for improvement from the high school as far as um, competency-based education. And the last step is assessment and reporting. That's why it's called an assessment coordinator. 
but this wasn't finalized after the curriculum project manager was was rejected, removed from, removed from the budget. That didn't happen at that time because the strategic plan hadn't been approved yet. We didn't know um, what we were going to use the grant funds for, but we realized, oh, there's a there's a very big project coming up. At the, at, the, at the top of the um, strategic plan for academic achievement. Yes, the high school still needs to work on that. And part of that is that we're changing from power school to infinite campus. And infinite campus is, um, it will be a learning platform where we can report on competencies. So it is the end of the process. And we're taking it seriously that the board is asking us to do better to do better with reporting, with assessments at the high school. Um, and it's, it's a huge endeavor to change from power school over to infinite campus. That's how seriously the high school and the district are taking this. So that's why this team has decided we want to use Title IIA funds. We hear the board loud and clear. It's not in the district budget, loud and clear. But we're going to use Title IIA funds so that we can further support the work and make progress. Okay. If um, is there a board member who might have a different opinion than Charlene? Well, I'd just like to ask some questions. Yeah, of I'm not yeah. sure questions. if I heard correctly earlier on that this position was required for some reason by the state. It's a new one. I mean, I may have misheard it. If you can. Uh, no, not required. Only that um, it's allowable under Title IIA funds. Okay and that um, we have a requirement to, to make progress on the strategic plan and it's the top goal of academic achievement. So. Can I add one more comment? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel that the spirit of this request is to entrust the superintendent to make decisions for hiring during this period so as not to impede the progress of our school year and potentially lose good candidates just because we don't have board meetings. Uh, I, I feel personally that I also would entrust her to make this important decision. I don't see why we need our fingerprints on it. Um, so I'm not in favor of the qualifier. Um, so that's just where I stand. Oh, is there anybody else who might share more of an opinion with Jim Pittman or a differing opinion with Charlene? Is, it, is your opinion the same or different as Charlene's? Because we're going to get to the people who agree with Charlene after. Oh, OK. I just want to make sure I'm trying to, is there anybody else who might agree with Jim? I feel that Charlene's modifier, which um, encompasses, a, it encompasses a fairly broad range of things. And so while, while there may be umbrage with the particular position that is on the table today, I think that to circumscribe the superintendent's ability to hire during the summer related to any kind of grant funding may have knock-on effects that aren't being really considered at this time. Um, so I would caution the board in that way that that's a broader brush than perhaps was intended. Okay, and Tom, you? Yes, um, I think something that might be finer to the point I don't know, can I offer an amendment to the... You can make a motion to amend the motion, if you'd like. Okay. Uh, I move to grant the superintendent authority to hire between the July and September board meetings, except for administrative unit assistants, including assistant superintendents and business managers for school board, which must be presented to the school board for appointment. Okay, so that's... a. Uh an, am an amendment to the to the motion. Is there any second to Tom's amendment to Charlene's motion? Second. I'm confused. Okay, for discussion. So motion by Tom, second by by Jim Manning. I'm confused what how that would change. So I understand Charlene's motion. She wants any grant funded position. New it's position. not yeah any new grant fund. So any newly established position that's grant funded. You think that. There needs to be a presentation at the September meeting, and the board will approve it then. Yes. Okay. So, Tom, what are what are you offering at this point that would be different? Well, I'm assuming that the position would be an assistant to 
uh, Dr. Hills. Oh, I see. Um, no, it will not be Mrs. Stanton. It will be um, a standalone. Certainly, they would report to Dr. Hills. So the title is assessment coordinator. I agree. Okay, I have a better. I understand your motion. I understand. <laughs> so you don't think that you want to make it so then there has to be a presentation on anybody who's hired to be an assistant to the administrative staff that you listed. So that would be superintendent, assistant superintendent, curriculum coordinator, or director, curriculum director, and the business office, yeah. office manager. Okay. Um, and that's... Um, but the, super, yeah, the superintendent is holding that this is not an assistant to any of those administrative mm -hmm. positions. They report, but is it? they report to her. They report but it's not to an who? assistant. She would re or he would report to Dr. Hills. But it's not an assistant. It's like like so principals report to me. They're not my assistants. Okay, so are we are we kind of wading into semantics here? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I see, think techni there, technically there yes, but there's a huge difference between someone. If, maybe that would solve it. I'm sorry. What if if Tom's amendment was um, <clears throat> instead of assistant to but reporting to those individuals listed, then that would probably solve it, right? Okay. And this also comes from um, the New Hampshire Ed Rules, which is 302.1J, um, which says the superintendent may nominate one or more administrative unit assistants, including assistant superintendents and business managers for school board appointment. Um, that'd be like yeah, that Heather would be or, or yeah, Dr. Hills. That would be the, the head administrative team. Um, there is, so Tom's amendment is on the floor to amend Charlene's motion is to keep track of everything, but yes, Mary? I feel like we're stepping into the management field of, and that side of our <coughs> purview with this amending of amendings. I can't say it as well as Jim or Dr. Beth, but I, because <laughs> I'm hot and I think I have like five words left in <laughs> but thank you. I feel like uh, they get the trust in the, the process of and the structure that is in place and is uh, no indication that there's a, a failing in my opinion. I the uh, amendment no, well, not the amendment, what do you call it? The motion that exists and is suggested I feel meets the need. It hasn't been spoken of course, so we have to I know we have to go through, yeah. I, I, I didn't know if this was going to happen this meeting, but I was prepared for how I needed to, um, how I needed to, you know, handle this as the chair, as what was recommended by the school board's association. Was, you know, when these types of disagreements happen between boards and our superintendent. Um, well, you know, not to make it sound like you know this is a dire issue, but it's it's not. But um, you know, so I'm trying to be neutral. Um, Dr. Beth. Is it appropriate to suggest a compromise with this? Um, I mean, I would say that's that's within that's within the scope of Tom's amendment, but we may want to vote on Tom's amendment first prior. Well, I don't know. I mean, do do you still support your amendment as it's currently worded as assistance? I do. If, uh, I, I would prefer not an amendment on top of an amendment. It might be easier to withdraw a motion and hear what Dr. Beth has to say if you would be willing to. Willing you don't to, have to, though. I'm willing to withdraw my motion if it can be replaced by something that accomplishes the, basically the same thing, which is trying to prevent what happened with the curriculum project manager. And it is difficult for me after two years in a row. You know, the, the first time I chalked it up to, you know, maybe a rookie mistake because you were new. Um, I don't know what happened with Dr. Hills because um, when we originally approved the curriculum project manager, which was supposed to be for a limited time, when we made, when we approved it, the motion was to require when the grant ran out, when the grant money dried up, that Dr. Hills would come back and make presentations to the school board to justify continuing <coughs> the position. 
That didn't happen the first year, and several of us were bothered by that. When it didn't happen the second year in a row, after we had already been told it's only for one more year, we just need it one more year. And then when we were approached the following year, again, we never received any kind of a presentation. Sorry. What, 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 what we got, are you talking about the December meeting in New Durham? I would not. That was part, that was a follow-up, but I, in Ossipi, I did an extensive presentation. It was extensive with that position in it. With the position included. It was extensive, and I re-forwarded it several times after the accusation that we did not provide the information. So As I recall, there was no, there, there was no, um, quantification there there was all the information we got was basically anecdotal and there and if I may if I may yeah. um, this position in title 2a it's not the same position but it has elements so, of the same position yes it has elements because we still need some work it is not the same position and um, as far as it's only for one year. If 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 for some reason we propose a position that the board does not want to ask the taxpayers to pay for, you just vote it down, as you did in January. So that's the so, board's purview every so year. So you're telling us now this is only for one year. This is a grant funded position, Title Two A, <clears throat> that is for one year. Right, which is what we were told previously about the curriculum project manager mm -hmm. once the grant dried up and I think it was was it a two-year grant or a three-year grant? The original grant was a two-year grant. It was a two-year grant and then then without any kind of presentation it came to the board to we're only going to need it for one more year and we approved it for one more year and then the second year and then came she back. made that presentation at Ossipi to explain why we asked for it again. And um, I, was, I was at Ossipi. Yeah, I, I okay. must not have. I must not have. And then I got forwarded much, it. much, um, much more than just we needed. Okay. Okay. It was a very thorough um, presentation, and we reforwarded it several times. Yeah, Heather, if you'd like to say something. May I just respectfully offer that um, in the 16 years I've been here, Title One, Title Two A, Title Four. IDEA all have funded over a million dollars worth of positions that the district taxpayers have not had to absorb because we've been able to allocate the funds to support the priorities of the district. This is not any any different with all due respect. Um, well, any positions that we put in the other groups. Oh, just a clarifying point, then you can speak, Dana. Um, historically, the board hasn't gone involved in the Title I funding, like in that funding plan and any positions funded from it. Um, unless there is a mixture of our public dollars, sometimes there can be a mix, my understanding, and that's sometimes, you know, if it's, if it's our property taxpayer money that, you know, from our regular budget that supplements it, you know, then, then we would get involved in posting the position and hiring. But when it's fully title funds, we haven't been involved. But, so really, I think the question I'm hearing here is, does this board want to be involved in title funding and improving those positions of title funding is that an expectation we're going to set for administration and the administration would find that to be onerous and them being able to do that job but some board members are arguing that it's you know they want increased transparency on that so that's what i'm hearing am i am i incorrect in hearing that well that's that's her motion well, I mean, that's her, but I think that's the crux of it. People want to be more involved in these grant-funded positions, not just grant funding like ARPA or other grants that we get are a mixture of our property tax grant money and title grants, but even the positions that are solely title grant funded. It sounds like there's just an interest in blocking this one position. Okay, and that's... That's okay. what I'm that's hearing, right. not an interest in being involved in title funds. Okay. Is that... Would, should should I be more specific with with um, what are we calling this new position? I mean, I I you know if we want more job it's description assessment coordinator. Ooh, it's in the title two A. 
board has a policy that the superintendent is responsible for job descriptions. Before we get to your comments, Dana, we probably should vote on Tom's amendment. Um, what was that again? Tom's amendment was essentially your motion, but amending the the um, the requisite the prerequisite that it would be no grant funded positions that are assistance to any of our head administrative team that's in the room right now. Which but that suggested a different some reporting to you instead of assistant to. Well, wait, she didn't make a motion I to amend it. My motion said uh, assistant to. except for administrative unit assistants, including assistant superintendents and business managers by school board appointment. Uh, then we got into the semantics of whether the, uh, an assistant to an assistant of the board uh, would fall on me. Well, Dr. Eric Kelly and none of these professional staff are our assistants, and the people who they supervise professional staff weren't their assistants, right? I mean, correct. So Kathy, Kathy is not an assistant. She is a um, office. What's what? Business administrator. She's a business oh, administrator. Which other one are you talking about? Other Kathy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, administrative assistant. You just had a job I don't think that's the no. <laughs> same. But, but like, so <laughs> the way I'm hearing your motion is it would prohibit them from hiring Kathy, which we've never been involved, I don't think, in no. the hiring of Kathy. That's no. usually solely within the superintendent. I'm right. I'm not seeking not to. Um, but okay, your, motion, your motion is written in a way that that's how I would interpret it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very reasonable way to interpret it. So I, I think we should have a vote on Tom's amendment first. More discussion, please. On any other. Well, I think we I would prefer us to get back to Charlene's underlying motion because that seems where but if we most vote of the discussion Tom, is. If I understand correctly, it renders null hers. No, well, it would amend her motion. But it wouldn't pass. We'd still have to vote on the motion. Still vote on her motion. So we're voting on Tom's amendment of her motion. There could be another draws. amendment. There could always be another amendment. I, my, I, I just need to say, and I apologize if I'm doing this out of some kind of order, I don't get how this improves that which is written. <clears throat> you can make or, or clarifies or sharpens or whatever. I don't see it. I, I, I don't hear it. I, hear, yes. I think if a majority of the board votes against it, we go back to Charlene's motion. What if we don't understand it as a, as a cluster? I mean, we have two, point, two different points of view, and um, I'm hearing, well, okay, variation on the theme. I, I completely paid attention to the assessments and uh, that which was presented, um, the evaluation, and maybe it's my perspective as an educator, and it just comes kind of naturally. I, there it is, I see it. And I understand it. It just feels like we're muddying the water, and maybe down the road we're gonna have to change it again. So I'm just trying to facilitate because we're still at an amendment, and we need to eventually get to a motion. I understand. I just don't so want to, I don't want to expedite something that doesn't deserve expedition. No, I'm not trying That's to. It's a big word for when you have. I'm not trying to <laughs> expedite this process. I'm trying to facilitate. So if we talk about an amendment for the next two hours, we'll never finish our meeting. We won't even finish the motion. So I'm trying to get us back to the regular motion, to some motion for us to be discussing, or even to change additionally. So um, I would, I would, I think it's time for us to call a vote at least on the amendment and either so vote yes or no. So we two people who've been wanting to speak. Well, I, yeah. She has a point of more. Yeah. I believe your motion should be voted on first because actually Tom is amending your motion. No, Tom was making a motion to amend her motion. So we would vote on the amendment, and then we would vote on the under whatever the motion would be after voting on the amendment. So if we voted on the motion, there would never be an amendment, because then we would have made a decision, and that would have been the board's decision. So Tom wanted to change Charlene's motion because he wants to vote on a different motion. Could I, could I get some clarification from Tom? Yeah. Um, Beth had made a suggestion that you change the word assisting or assistance mm -hmm. to reporting to. Would you be okay with that that okay. change? Because I think if we 
A dog here a minute for my motion and basically renders my motion moot. Everyone if you if you heard Dr. Eric Cummings said everyone reports to her as a superintendent. So that would render the motion the whole point of it where we need to we do need to hire staff in the There's summer to make sure that we can get people their contracts so that okay. we can fill positions otherwise other school districts okay. will hire them and fill the positions. I, I understand that, but we all know that um, we have we have had information that uh, there is one particular current employee in mind for this position. So I don't think that the argument that, oh, we have to be able to hire people because we'll, you know, we'll lose people to Mr. other Chair. things. Yeah. Mr. Chair? Um, so asking someone, even if we have someone in mind, asking them to wait for a contract until September or something, they will not stay for that. That's the purpose of this whole page, is to ask for the authority to hire because the school year is starting. And if you know we have candidates who are educators, um, if this board decides to vote against that position in September, they are very less likely to gain a, a position that starts halfway through September. So um, so you're saying, you, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying that the one particular position that um, has caused some concern, given its similarity to one that the board voted to take out of the budget. Um, you're saying that um, that you don't feel as if the district deserves a, a, a description, a, a full report of what this is and why it's needed, other than just the brief bit about we're changing to a different kind of assessment. Um, you said, I'm sorry, from what was it called? The school thing to Power school to infinite campus. Power school to infinite campus. Is that a is that a, a, a is that a software program for educators? What is that? It's That's all of our grades going in. All of the grades, attendance, information, all the student reporting, all the student information. And why are we switching from Power School to Infinite Campus? Because Infinite Campus reports out on competency-based education, and Power School is not equipped to. We had a committee all year looking at this, and we've come to the point where now we're ready to change. So it is not a replacement for curriculum project manager, but yes, it does dovetail into that work that we've been asked to improve at that school. And, and no, to your question, I disagree with the premise of that question, that no, the district doesn't, I don't think the district deserves or is, um, is, has the right to information. I disagree with that premise. I would not say that. Um, we are open to meeting with anyone, including board members, to community members, anyone who would like more information about grants. I meet with people every day. I met with the director of the new charter school today. I meet with people about grants, about positions, about budgets, all the time. So we're, we're an open book, and we want to share that information with whoever is interested. But to block a position or, or hiring to September um, is sabotaging the effort. So I'm just I'm just trying to figure out when what regular board meeting would you present this to the board? It's not a presentation. It's Title II A funds. So as Heather mentioned, in 15 years, it's it is the purview of management to to allocate federal funds. And it'll only be for one year. This position, yes. And you won't come back next year to ask for I, it? I, if they not did, for the this board position. could say no. Okay. So that's something to remember, too. But um, I mean, I'm just trying to facilitate them. I can't tell you what the budget process will bring. Yeah, it's exactly. different every year. I can tell you right now I'm not asking for an assessment coordinator based on this conversation. But I would hope that we could use the information, the, the, the um, you know, what our leaders come to the board about. Um, I hope we could use that information that we have at the time that we receive from principals that we can come to you in faith and kind with integrity as far as what's needed. I don't know if we'll need a work on assessments in November. I have no idea. But that's the purview of the board. You you can decide you have to decide how to how to 
budget, $60 million, but not Title II funds. Any other comments? I like the motion as written on the page. You like the motion on the page? I do. And if there would be interest in a special meeting of this board to discuss that particular position further, I think that's fine. But I don't think we should hold up hiring in this district for three months over one position. We should duly deal with that issue um, in time. Is there anybody else? Where did you get three months? I'm just curious. July, August, September. Well, we may have to be in September, but we don't need to. We don't need to mince. I'm not. Yeah, we don't need to mince our months here. Um, yes. I, I, I'm sorry. I just want to be sure I understood when you were referring to the original. This is the page we saw before uh, Charlene. Before Charlene's and, proposal. And Tom's, before Tom's amendment. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And Charlie and I understand you have concerns. I respect that. But I feel to tie our superintendent's hands, it, seemed, it feels very arbitrary to me. And, uh, you know, and it's been clearly stated these are not our taxpayer dollars at work until maybe the future. And we shouldn't be making a decision on the future. Well, I, I appreciate that, but you, I also know wait one, two Charlie, years in a row, just, we, Charlie, we please one, with $230,000. Charlie, one second, if we could just hear it. I want to know if there's anybody else who might want to voice their opinions in agreement with Dr. Beth and Jim Pittman. That would be me. I, I feel like as written and as we have precedent from last year, and, the, uh, and our role as a board to govern and not manage, I felt very uncomfortable with stepping into that. I uh, completely agree with these people who are way more articulate than I am this evening. Is there anybody else that would, is there anybody who still agrees with Charlene? I'm just trying to get an idea, give everyone an idea so we can start voting because I don't want us playing a game of chicken over an amendment for the next hour. Is there anybody who agrees with Charlene still or agrees with Tom's amendment or Charlene's underlying motion who would want to speak to it? Can we just call for the vote on, on Tom's yeah. amendment? Well, you know, if everyone's good for us voting, because I'd, I'd like us to vote. Okay, so we'll first vote, Kathy, once you're ready, we'll vote on Tom's amendment first. I'm going to... Well, I was going to ask Tom to send it to me, please. Or would you read it and then send it to me, please? Yep. Yeah, please restate your motion. Uh, first part is the motion as standard. Um, I move to grant the superintendent the authority to hire between the July and September board meetings, except for administrative unit assistants, including assistant superintendents and business managers for school board appointment. Okay, that's the motion. I, as I said at the beginning, sure. well, I think it was seconded by Dr. So it was a motion by Tom, second by Dr. Jim. I mentioned I was going to abstain because I'm trying to be neutral here. Um, so I'm trying to be the best liaison I can. I can see it's got a little tense, so you know we can. We could, I know it's hot in here, but if we could stay, you know, respectful as we finish this up, that would be really appreciated. Yeah. Apologies. All right. Um, when you're ready, Kathy, if you would call the roll. Tom. Yes. Guy. Yes. Jim Pittman? No. Dr. Jim? No. Charlene? No. Dana? Yes. Mary? No. Dr. Bob? No. And I abstain. Okay, so Tom's amendment fails. So now we're back to the original motion of Charlene's. Charlene, would you restate your motion? Oh, you have a second. I'm going to grant the student has amended the amendment. authority to hire. Oh, was the amendment, amendment failed? Oh, so you go back to her. We go back to hers, yeah. So if you would restate your motion, and we can either continue discussing or vote on Charlene's motion. I move to grant the superintendent the authority to hire between the July and September board meetings, except for any new grant-funded positions, which shall be presented to the board for approval at the September board meeting. So that was your motion, and it was seconded by Tom, <coughs> correct? Did you second that motion? Yes. You seconded that motion. 
Is there any additional discussion on that? There was a lot of discussion on the amendment that I think falls under the purview of this. Um, I don't know if Charlene's motion, if that will change anything based on um, what just happened with Tom's motion. Um, I also wonder if the board really does want to entertain a special meeting to discuss just this position when it seems as if the board, at least the majority of the board, doesn't think it's within their purview. So, that was I awesome. think we're bound to do this because it is an active motion. Well, I just, I didn't, that came up in discussion. I'm just trying to be amiable. But I, I understand what you're saying, Jim. Probably a separate discussion unto itself. Is there any other discussion then on Charlene's motion? Hearing none, if you would call the uh, the roll. Guy. No. Tom. No. Jim Pittman. No. Doctor Jim. No. Charlene. Yes. Dana. Yes. Mary. No. Doctor Beth. No. Brody. I don't understand again. Okay. So. I'd like to make a motion that. Um, I move to grant the superintendent the authority to hire between the July and September board meetings. I second that. Okay. I'm going to vote on this one. I think the board, I think we've resolved it. We're not getting involved in any of the title grant funding, the grant funded positions. This board's going to keep its existing precedent, keep it orthodox set. That's within the purview of management. So, yes, Dana. I just have one comment about the whole thing. For example, I was concerned when I read the emails that supported this position, the other position, the project manager on the English department head. Do you the English department? Yes. Yeah. I understand that you and your department have done a wonderful job on this. But you stated you stated that it scared me that some departments or some teachers has, may not be on board with the whole idea altogether of the change in order to make. And so I'm wondering what did our current principal as the program director do to move this thing along. Doesn't sound he even said how important it was to continue with the position. But what was done during the year through so teachers meeting, staff development, the presentation in New York, was that by uh, I think it was Dr. Hills, was it not? <laughs> I, I think he just paid you a high compliment. <laughs> was it someone that it might have been, but a number of staff members spoke in favor of it. And is that who you're talking about maybe? Yes. I think it was maybe two or three, two or three staff members. We're speaking in favor of the curriculum project manager position, as I recall. Yeah. Well, I want to. We're right now. The motion on the floor is about whether or not we're going to authorize the superintendent the power to hire until the September I meeting. I thought we were really voting. Right? No, that no, we no, voting against Charlene's motion. We, we have another motion. motion. So I hear what you're saying, Dane, about the curriculum project manager, and we had a whole six month, you know, of debating that and. <laughs> we made a decision, presented a budget without it. Um, and the superintendent holds that this new position that's fully funded by title funds is not that position. And the rest, you know, majority of the board, um, I don't know, I won't, I won't go as far as to say it's like 100%, but they definitely are saying that that's within her purview, title grant funded positions. And there's a big difference too. You can't you can't supplant existing positions with title funding. You can only supplement. So that's the other thing. The state wouldn't have approved it if it wasn't a new position, is what the school boards association um, explained to me. So if the state has approved it, then it's a different position than the curriculum project manager. So we're not, 
you know, I don't want us to go to back into the curriculum project manager, you know, discussion. We've had that discussion and made that decision last year. And the voters agreed with us by passing our budget the way it was without that position in it. So, does that make sense? Does that clarify? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there any, yeah, is there any discussion, though, on the motion on the floor? I don't know if this is the right time to ask about a special meeting or if you want to talk about that. No, that would be after. We're, we're not, the not motion, we're going to authorize the superintendent the power to hire until the September board meeting. It's a yes or no question. I'm going to call the vote. Is everyone good? Mm -hmm. All right. Kathy, when you're ready, could you please uh, call the word? Aye. Yes. Tom. Aye. Jim Pittman. Yes. Dr. Manning. Yes. Charlene. No. Dana. Yes. Mary? Yes. Dr. Bass? Yes. Brody? Aye. Okay. Um. Okay, next item. Thank you for your support. Uh, the 24-25 school calendar. Uh, thank you for your patience with this. This is something you've already approved. However, I'm bringing it to the board to ask for approval. Uh, for a significant and meaningful change to this calendar. Uh, prior to June 19th of this year, we received numerous inquiries and requests from the community asking how our district plans to honor Juneteenth. In response to these concerns and in recognition of the day's historical importance, we propose to officially observe June 19th as a holiday in our school calendar starting next year and moving forward. Um, it is the 60th anniversary of a significant event in our nation's history. Um, so to accommodate this change, we propose moving the last day of school for students and staff from June 19th to 18th and officially recognizing June 19th as a holiday. We have a proposed motion for you at the bottom of the page. Would anyone like to make the motion? So move and be proud to propose the motion to add June 19th as a holiday. That's written here in the 2024-2025 school calendar. Move the last day of school. Between 18 and 2025. Second. So school will be out. Well, before the 19th. I'd say technically, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, is there any other discussion about Juneteenth being added as a holiday? I'd like to just add some context. I know it means that. You know, school end on the 18th and Juneteenth is the 19th, ho you know, the holiday. But if there's snow days, you know, it would still be recognized as a holiday. So there would be school next week. The superintendent explained to me that they would maybe go and count by hours, which the State Department of Education allows, so then they wouldn't have to add too many snow days and go late into June if that was necessary. And we've done that before in the past, so that's not anything that's um, too strenuous for the administrative team to do. Um, but this, I, I, I think the spirit of the motion is that it wouldn't just be Juneteenth as a holiday in this calendar, but it would be an expectation that it would probably continue moving forward as a holiday. So this is on your vote. You're not voting on it for one year. You're going to vote on it to amend the current calendar that we adopted back in January, and it would continue as a holiday in subsequent years when they bring forward a calendar to us, just so everyone's clear. All right. And you'll vote on the calendar every year. Yes. Yeah, so. so. I don't think anyone will have a problem with Juneteenth in future years when it's on our calendar, when it's brought forward, but um, the curveballs happen all the time, right? <laughs> so I think we have one tonight. <laughs> um, all right, is everyone ready to vote? Does anyone have any discussion? I have a question. Is, yes. Uh, the holiday recognized by the federal or the state government? It's the federal, and New Hampshire was one of the last to recognize it. So you knew voted on it in 2019. I know our library um, does all federal holidays, and Wolfboro, I should say. The Wolfboro Public Library, our, we provide all staff, and we close the library at all federal holidays, unless staff want to work. Sometimes we'll have some staff that say, I'd like to work on a federal holiday. So some have worked on Juneteenth, some haven't, but rather than the option of a holiday. So it's, um, it's something that a lot of municipalities or different town departments throughout our district are starting to recognize. So, is there any other discussion? 
Hearing none, um, would you call the roll of hearing, Kathy, please? Guy? No. Tom? Yes. Gentlemen? Yes. Dr. Manning? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dana? Yes. Mary? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. Brody? Aye. Thank you. The last item, um, I'll ask Kathy O to speak to food service costs. This is um, something we bring up uh, every summer in anticipation of the start of the school year. Yes. So, by the Bureau of Nutrition and the Department of um, Nutrition, we have to go through, the business administrators every year have to go through um, what's called the PLE tool. The, um, yeah, now that I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> the price lunch equity tool. What we have to do is we have to make sure that we are selling our full pay meals, our lunches, um, to our students that is in line with what our reimbursable rate is. So for next year, the reimbursable rate is somewhere around $3.85 per meal. That's what the district will receive from the federal funds for every full pay lunch we will become offer to students or they pay to students. So each year that dollar that, that amount goes up. We have to keep trying to be in line with that. We are not there. So right now, so every year I do come to you asking to raise the price of lunches. This current year that we just finished, the elementary school lunches are three dollars. And the high school, the middle school and high school lunches are three dollars and fifty cents. So right now, that is what's called a weighted average of $3.21. And like I said, for next year, it should be up around the $3.80. The federal government and the state wants us to move that number up. Or the district can pay the offset. I believe that I'm just I'm asking to raise both prices, uh, the elementary lunches and the middle and high school lunches, by $0.25 cents each. The previous year, we, we increased it about 20 cents each, so I'm requesting that we have elementary lunches at $3.25 per meal and um, the middle school, high school at $3.75, which will bring the weighted average up to $3.46, which is up from $3.21, but still not at the $3.80, which is okay by the federal government. It shows that we're moving that direction. Okay. So. Yeah. So I I'm quick sorry. clarification, if I may, this this <coughs> would be these would be the prices that would be charged the parents the full students. pay, right? The full pay. The full pay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, let's have. Well, do you have a question or I do. a comment? Uh, do these prices address the special needs of the children who identify as animals? Because human food uh, often is poisonous to animals, and we know we have those kinds of food. We don't. We don't have kids that are. No. I'm, I'm, we, we're not feeding kids. Animal food, because our even though they identify as animals and wear their Halloween costumes to school. To my knowledge, that's not the case in our school district. Well, I know for a fact that it has been verified by administration and staff, and I want to know, yes or no. I don't have an answer to that. Good enough. I'll accept that. Thank you. Can I expand upon why I'm not in the schools? And I fully understand. That. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. okay. Um, I'll say, I mean, I, I'm a little taken aback by the comment guy. I think, um, you know, I think our, our professional staff who I've spoken to have said there aren't litter boxes in our schools. Kids aren't trying to eat, you know, kibble or, you know, cat food or dog food. And um, I've yet to see even just walk around public in Wolfboro, that, you know, whether it's walking or seeing kids walk around town, any kid be dressed like an animal. And I haven't um, heard about it. I've heard people say they've heard from someone, but you know that's just um, you know. Obviously, it could be put. It doesn't reveal the sources, but they are there, and no one is forcing them to eat dog food or cat food or anything. I'm saying, if they're animals, should they be treated that way? That's my only question. I don't need a response. Point of order, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yeah, we can. We can move on. Okay. Is the motion to increase the price for elementary school to three dollars and twenty-five cents per full cost meal, and for the high school three dollars and middle school, high school, middle school, high school yeah. three dollars and seventy-five cents? Correct. That would be the motion. Someone 
Is that motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll we'll second that. Is there any additional discussion or questions? No, question. Question. At the Bologna. I hate it. I hate that we're charging kids more for lunch than this. Yeah. I have a question. I, um, a little familiar with certainly no expert. Uh, the federal reimbursement. Is it not true though that the federal government also reimburses the full pay? Yes. Yes. I, I think that mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad you clarified that. Yes. There's often a, a, you know, the full pay. It's it's really not full pay. There's still a subsidy by the federal government. Correct. Well, we to do get right. So every reimbursable meal that we serve, whether it be a student who gets free and reduced or full pay. That is the reimbursable amount. And a second question, please. Is there any data, or has it been uh, looked at as these prices go up? Is um, the purchase of lunching, lunch, really hard. lunch is going down? I mean, are people like, no, I can't pay that. I'm going to bring from home. Is there any? Are, are the numbers of the served? For, no, they're, they're not going down. Are they going up? Um, I would say this past year, from what I gleaned, I, I have the documentation that I just got from the food service director. I haven't compared it yet, because usually when I start getting ready for the audit, which we're still closing out the year by far, um, I'll start looking at that and making comparisons and just looking at that. But I can say from, um, from her input, I would not say they're going down if they're just around the same amount, that, that would be my best guesstimate at the moment. Yeah. 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 So, so um, just to clarify then, if we are reimbursed at the same rate, regardless of the reduced lunch, or do we make a surplus from the reimbursement based on? We are not making a surplus from the reimbursement, and that is why this price, you know, the equity tool is, is a requirement, okay. so that the federal government isn't subsidizing us more than what we're actually. Yes, Charlene. Um, at our Brookfield meeting last August, I asked a question about universal lunches. Mm -hmm. And as I recall, other board members were interested in you providing the cost of universal lunches for the district. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, I have not received that figure. And the reason I'm asking it again mm -hmm. is because um, there are states who surround us who have found ways to cover universal lunches. And um, I'm wondering if that's something, since several of us have expressed interest in mm -hmm. that, and um, one of the points I made last year at the Brookfield meeting was that we're requiring students to be in school and we're re we want them to be safe and we want them to be educated and yet we're not taking care of one of their most essential needs which is proper nutrition. And so I would like to know what the dollar figure would be based on current enrollment, the total cost, and while we're on the subject of, of applying for grants, I know that there is federal money available to provide lunches for students over the summer. I think, as I recall, the governor voted, or, or someone decided not to access that. But I'm wondering what we as a district, once we have the figures, what we could do to try to provide universal lunches. I can get those numbers for you. You're right, I do not have them. I, I've been dueling um, two different positions at the SAU office for a few months now. So when I start getting into my audit, I'll have the documentation and I can follow up with you in September as to what the cost would be for universal meals. There's also the factor of, um, there's a lot of factors. I know Mary Schiller up here is, is, is an active person trying to push that through and I, I think there's more talk at the state level I you can talk to it better than I I'm, I'm fully prepared that. to do so tonight yeah. Yeah. I think um, I think to just get us back on topic um, well it's related but we need to set the price for the meals for the elementary schools in the middle and the high school I think that's a discussion during the finance um, process so something to you know once Kathy has more time in September 
And once we have a meeting at the beginning of October before our finance process, maybe that's something at the October meeting, Kathy, I might say, this is the numbers I'm going to be bringing to the finance committee. And you guys are welcome to discuss these numbers as the finance committee reviews these right, things which and is what I, as considerations. Which was why I brought it up yes. last August in anticipation that it would be brought forward during the budgeting process last fall. And it didn't happen. So I'm just... You know, this no. is just my gentle reminder that, that gee, could we, you know, look oh, into that? I think um, I, it'll be something that the Finance Committee uh, will consider to review. Um, we'll be an ongoing discussion, so, you know, maybe we discuss more at our next meeting or at our October meeting. And so. you had information? When it's appropriate, I will sure. Okay. Well, um, we have a motion on the floor to increase the price of the full cost lunch in the elementary schools to three twenty five and for the middle and high school to three dollars and seventy five cents. And the motion was made by was it you, Jim? No, I think Dr. Dr. Manning. Dr. Manning. Dr. Manning. Dr. Manning and you sent it. Okay. Is there any other discussion on the substance of that motion? Hearing none, uh, Kathy, would you call the roll? Guy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim Pittman? Yes. Dr. Manning? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dana? Yes. Mary? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. <laughs> Brody? Aye. Uh, okay. That Thank you. Thank you. That was a longer You know, sometimes. <laughs> I think it was we Didn't made your report be. longer. Didn't mean to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all your support. Um, next is the chairman's report. So correspondence. Um, the district expressed sympathy to two staff members. Um, and we have the Nantra School Boards Association Delegate Assembly that's coming up on October 19th. It is a Saturday, so hopefully that will be easier for people with working schedules who want to attend. Mr. Chair, have yes. you designated a person who will represent us at that? I was um I was going to ask the board to um, make a motion to see if someone would want to I'm going to go but if you want someone to be the designated voting member who would represent us um yeah you know I talked to Mary Shilriff and because she had an interest in a possible um resolution so I thought we'd take up her resolution and if this board supported the resolution that she wants to submit to the school boards association she might be the natural person to be our um, our you know our official voting member of the delegate assembly because she may have to speak to that resolution in front of the entire delegate assembly. So I, think, uh, I told her I would, you know, I would support. Um, Do they have air conditioning? It's, <laughs> it's in the proponent it's center, right? October. Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually very chilly though. Yeah. yeah. It's it's yeah. It's yeah. It's and yeah, it'll be October. Yeah. Well, you're, yeah, you're making a joke right yeah, now. Right. So. so if I may, just, uh, because I've attended these in the past, um, we can send our whole board if we want, but there's only one person designated to vote. Let's do it. Represent yeah. it. So I would encourage people to have an interest. Yeah. Carpool, yeah. we can do it. Yeah. I, I will plan on attending. I mean, usually it's your delegation will talk and then tell the person who votes. This is how we're feeling. I, I would hope, Mary, that after we designate you as our voting member, if we get there and there's resolutions, you're you're you'll, you'll listen to the rest of us. <laughs> Carpool, I'll go. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, if we could keep the side conversation at a minimum, Sorry. that's fine. Um, so first, um, Mary has a resolution that she'd like our board to endorse and to submit to the NHSBA um, uh, annual uh, delegate assembly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I too was here last August, and it was a very good conversation. We got a lot of good. Um, information and appreciate I do want to say the work that's done with food services uh, and the changes that come over time thank you for that and uh, it, the note for me at least I, I spent a lot of time on this we all know about the states that surround us uh, we all know that it's possible for what I don't like to call the universal free lunch I refer to think of it personally as complimentary lunch as a consequence of attending required attendance of school so um, there are many factors that I personally could share should share them before I don't know that it's necessary but it, it speaks colossally to all that we value with students their presence um, it increases attendance and when you are attending it increases achievement 
Um, so there's all kind of data like that where we just kind of know it's the right it's the right move in many <coughs> aspects. But as far as Mr. Uh, Chair, there as far as the resolution, I did spend some time speaking with the New Hampshire School Board Association, um, and a slight adjustment to my proposal tonight is that there already is a uh, resolution on the whatever it is called that they put the resolution on. Um, and it, it voted very well. I think it went to 50-50 and there was, uh, it finally went to tabling, I think is the terminology, by just simply one vote. So there's a great deal of support for this. And I'm just going to read the resolution as it exists now. And then I, I will uh, clarify what I'd like to pre present to this esteemed group. So the existing New Hampshire School Board Association, and I think it's one of those uh, resolutions that's very well worded in my opinion. The New Hampshire School Board Association supports that the state and federal government seek and provide viable, sustainable, permanent funding to provide a school breakfast and lunch at no cost to students. And, and the more you read something, as I used to tell my students, the more it starts to make sense, whether you agree with it or not, to, to seek and provide, uh, much of the pushback we often hear, even from our own uh, legislators, is, well, that's just going to raise taxes. No. It doesn't have to raise taxes. And the fact remains that the other uh, pushback I've gotten, this is personal experience, people that can afford to pay for lunch shouldn't. Well, everyone can afford to feed their children. <coughs> everyone can afford to feed their children. What they can't do is afford to feed, not everyone, afford to feed their children and pay the property taxes that go up, the cost of transportation, gasoline, rent, even finding rent, uh, finding affordable rent for the work that they are in. So it's not just about the price of a meal, and it's not about, I can't feed my kids. They can. All families want to and can feed their children. It's just everything else incorporated. So what I would like to suggest is this existing New Hampshire School Board resolution that we as a school board, the Governor Wentworth the Regional School District School Board vote that tonight to support and reaffirm this current New Hampshire School Board Association resolution that I just read to you. And so my suggestion is that we are in our voting uh, show support to uh, support for their res existing resolution and uh, to reaffirm and to show in our voting uh, in our minutes and in public that this is something that we support. I don't know what to do next, I just said a lot of stuff. Okay, so this is an eight. Uh, got a lot of things going on. So actually I do have, I move, is that sufficient to say it that way, Mr. Chair? Um, I move the government or school district. Well, I, I guess I had a clarifying question, sorry. Um, is this an existing resolution that's been adopted by the Delegate Assembly? Correct. Okay. And the, the, um, so you just want to support we, the Delegate Assembly's existing resolution correct. that already states the name for school boards the city so association the board, yes, are agree with their board. existing position? Correct. So you can make that motion, sure. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Um, this is based on guidance that I got hot off the presses yesterday. Uh, so I move that the Governor Wentworth Regional School District School Board vote to support and reaffirm the current New Hampshire School Board Association resolution, which reads, the New Hampshire School Board Association supports that the state and federal government seek and provide viable, sustainable, permanent funding to provide a school breakfast and lunch at no cost to students. I'll second that. Do you need help to Jim with this? That's a motion. Did someone second? I did. Charlene. Charlene seconded. Okay. Now. It's an Apple product. It's got to have a volume. There we go. I got it. Thank you. There we go. All right. Sorry, that would have been very distracting for the rest of the meeting. I wouldn't have been able to do it. 
I would have lost my last brain cell. <laughs> yes, discussion. No, very quick question. Does that resolution have a reference number of any sort so we can be sure we're addressing? Uh, I, it, it went, um, Brody, I think you, uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. you sent uh, the resolutions um, in an email to this group. Oh, I, I sent it to you. Oh, because you went well, to ask me, uh, I said, sorry. this is how they write the resolution. I don't even know which yeah. resolutions were written so as, as a sample. I, I do not know the specifics, but I can certainly get it's number two on the page. That's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, it probably doesn't matter, really. But if you had it. I would be glad to uh, forward that to everyone. Is there any other discussion or questions? All right. Well, I would have you restate your motion, but it was quite a lot. But it's essentially. We endorse the school boards association for the state and the federal government work towards making sure kids have access to And I think the two, the two really important words are seek, to seek out. So this is seek a... Seek out. Okay. For them to explore. Got it. I'm not sure if she has that. I was going to ask Mary oh, Yeah, if you could. Excellent. Oh, it's Which one? It's there. That one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when you're ready, <coughs> Kathy, for convenience. Guy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Yes. Dr. Manning? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dana? Yes. Mary? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. Brody? Aye. That's his name. Yeah, so. okay. We can all meet at Brody's house and Does, try to... <laughs> We've gotten a lot of emails from... Um, it's got a new car. Yes. It comes it's delivered tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. Well, the other, I got another one too. I've been, don't I don't like my car payments per se, but both my cars, mm -hmm. one the engine died and the other one was getting towards it, so I was like, I don't bite the bullet. I didn't like it. At any rate, um, you'll notice that there was, I think I've counted at least five emails in the last month from the NHSBA about um, calls for resolutions. I don't know if anyone else had any. Nope. Does anyone else have any? Okay. Well, I didn't know if anyone else was going to bring one forward to the board. I had it added to the agenda just in case. And it was in, you'll notice the email was in your meeting packets online for people to review in case they felt inspired to bring forward a resolution. Our board typically has not, that I've ever seen, brought forward a resolution to the NHSBA. It typically just goes we years ago. in the annual. Okay. Well, that's cool. Interesting. Okay. Well, seeing no other resolutions, we'll move on to the delegate assembly. Um, Mary seemed very passionate and interested in being involved with the delegate assembly, so I thought it might make natural sense to appoint her as our voting member at the delegate assembly, but if there's anybody else who and would really want to do it. I don't have to do it. Yeah. But I will definitely go and she goes. I would move that Mary be our voting delegate. Second. Ooh. I'll give the second to Dr. Beth. So the motion was made by Jim Pittman, the second was by Dr. Beth. Bring it, kids. Mary, you won't be alone. We can carpool if yes, you'd like to. Yes, I think it's um, phenomenal. I think this is how we move car. car. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, is there any discussion about that? The delegate gets to ride shotgun. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Kathy, when you're ready, you can call the roll. Guy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim Pittman? Yes. Dr. Manning? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Dana? Yes. Mary? Am I supposed to vote for myself? Mm -hmm. It's your choice. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Dr. Beth? Yes. Aye. Okay. That, um, that concludes my report. Just remember that's October 19th. It's a Saturday. Put it in your calendar. Um, and you're more than welcome. I at least know Mary and I will be there. You're not required to go, so show up, please. <laughs> it's important, isn't it? It is very important. It's important. The NHSBA provides a really amazing service to school boards like ours all across the state, advocating for, um, for well, just just for our school districts' ability to have local control and to provide the best educational services that we can to our students. So, and to to help us, you know, govern on a local level, help educate us too. They have great, amazing webinars that educate us in all the state laws and everything. So, kudos to them. Um, we're on to committee reports, academic affairs. You guys nothing, haven't met. Nothing tonight. Buildings and maintenance. Uh, we have a quick update on the train activity on the, uh, the buildings, yeah. which uh, Kathy Oaken. So I just, I have a very quick, um, brief <clears throat> update that came in yesterday in the email. Uh, the project manager from train is Peter Schumsky, 
and he is going into Ossipi tomorrow with subcontractors and they're working on the control valve work and the electrical work and they're also going to identify with the um, assistance of the uh, director of facilities, Phil Cousteau, for the air-cooled uh, condensers at the school. Are they on pace? I, uh, Summer. Yeah. yeah. And, and the way I say that is because then they're going to, after that week, they're going to have a more detailed schedule with us because I've been asking for that. Okay. So, yes. I think yeah. that'd be... Um, yeah. That'll be definitely... I was, was going to say we can discuss that next board meeting, but it will be yeah. done by the next board meeting. So. Well, we, yeah. Well, the majority of it, yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. I know we want yeah. uh, but safe I'll for students and staff to be yeah. in okay. there and learning, oh. educating. Yeah. Awesome. And I'll just mention that we do not have another meeting for building maintenance scheduled yet because of the fluidity yeah. of these projects. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll monitor that and, and see where that lands. I have a question, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. We haven't received the latest lead testing reports, and we, but we will. Um, okay. Does that fall under the purview of buildings and maintenance? I'm pretty sure it came to the entire board last time, but through buildings and maintenance first. Mm -hmm. But but that's that's if my memory is uh, correct. I understand. Everyone will receive those reports yeah. for sure. We're required and to post it. Communicate yeah, the they're on. Um, they're also on the state's website. Yeah. And so, all our schools. I know the most recent the ones we have are, but yeah. Yeah, we haven't got the latest ones yet. And it's been talked about. The remedial actions have been uh, noted. And just yeah. since I want buildings and maintenance. So. I brought, an interest. I brought it up last year too. That uh, you know, Thank you. make sure that we're doing that. Mr. Yes. Chair, um, is there still lead in any of the pipes at Ossipi Central School? I'll defer to. I'm sorry, I don't know that information at the moment. I mean, if obviously we're in compliance, and if we're not, we're working to be in compliance. Um, yeah, the report is posted on uh, every lead report is required to be posted on every school website. And with that report, it's from the, the third contracted party. Yeah. Um, with that, the um, assessment lists every water, yes. um, water. Faucet, faucet, spout, everything in yeah. the whole, in every building. And it says what we're required to do in the column. So it says either it's drinkable or there's remediation required or not available for drinking water. So that's what we comply with. And, and so if I go to the main website, the main GWRSD.org, then I can just go to an individual school and then I can find those yeah, results. Absolutely. Yeah, it's on every school. Sarah, so, Sarah Cousteau posts those yeah. the moment she gets them. And she sends, she's extremely well versed and extremely articulate and communicative with all the building principles because the reports from the um, from the third party, the, the company that does the testing, that's certified and, and licensed, um, sends them to her. She sends them immediately to the to the principals with the actions that are necessary. She follows up with the custodians and the principals to make sure that if anything is supposed to be, you know, x out and not used, that sign needs to be there um, and stay there until it is uh, rectified and retested and okay. So there has been um, very much a lot of communication going on with that, so I, you know. And, there, and we test three times a year, is it? Uh, I don't know the frequency, the, we meet the requirements, let's let's put it that way. So, and, and there are time, time stamped and all like that, so it, it's, yeah. When I was on buildings and maintenance, I was asked very similar questions, so the kids aren't drinking wet water. No. No. I think that should be very clearly yeah. stated, yeah. children aren't, cool. and staff are drinking that water and there's remediation ongoing. We should probably get that out into the public though. Because we have to send it home to every parent. Yeah. 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 And so we did that. Every time there's testing, we're required to send it home to parents. And, and, and on, the, post. on the website, yeah. And even on, on bulletin boards in the school as you yeah. walk in. So. We have questions about that and we direct them to all that information. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Finance committee, we have, uh, no we did, we have met this year, but we haven't had to meet since my last update for everyone else. So the letter went out, as you saw, to all the towns about the um, the impact fee uh, mistake that Wolfboro made that we helped them rectify, and um, an explanation was provided to all the towns and their leaders. And then um, we haven't heard a response from them. So that's all I have for finance. Nor have I. Thank you. I did yeah. not know if, if any had reached out to you, but none have reached out to them. 
Um, and then human resources has on that. Unless Kathy got a timeline for which so we don't have anything on. We don't have anything on the yeah. Yes, it has on That would go to the board chair. Okay. We're going to closing activities now then. We are at an advanced plan. Um, so future meeting dates, we have our NHSBA training at the KRHS Plex on uh, July 16th. We've got an email from Kathy Legassi about that. New staff orientation day is coming up, August 26th. Um, staff in-service days to begin the school year for staff it is August 27th through 29th. Um, Kingswood Regional Middle School K-6 meet and greets is August 29th. Uh, September 3rd is the first day of school for students. And on uh, September 9th um, is the new teacher reception at the Kingswood Arts Center at 4 p.m. And then our school board meeting will be after that. The non-public session will start at 6, and the public session will start at 7, as we usually do. Um, and you can always go to the Governor Wentworth uh, Regional School District Calendar at gwrsd.org backslash calendar to see additional events or if the calendar changes. And with that, um, we will now enter into our last round of public input, 15 minutes total, unless extended by a vote of the board. Um, we prefer people keep it to three minutes per individual to be respectful and direct the comments uh, to the board through the chair and to not make comments about other people in the crowd. Is there anyone who has any public input? Yes. That's something. First of all, thank you um, for bearing with this heat. And as you can imagine, I'm glad to see that the HVAC systems are hopefully on target and will be ready for September so our kids and teachers aren't dealing with this kind of issues. Oh, yeah, could you state your name? And oh, sorry. I apologize. I, know. I, know. I apologize. I'm Kim Kelleher. And I live in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Sorry. Um, the question I have is just a clarifying one, and Kathy, I'll maybe for you. Um, <laughs> is it about lunches are going up, but is there any impact on the breakfast, cost of breakfast? No, no, no just no, that's not even a requirement either, believe it or not. They all base it on the lunches. Okay. All paid, full paid only. Okay, thank no, you. She's no. curious. Thank you. Is there any other additional public input? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Excuse me, I'm going to be cold. My name is Ruth Plus. I live in Huffington, New York. And I have had several people ask me if um, what the school board, what the take is as far as males who identify as females using female bathrooms and lockers. Is that something that's happening now? Would that make sense? I mean, are we allowing males who identify as females to use the female bathrooms and lockers at this time? So we're not um, asking uh, students how they identify before they enter bathrooms. So no, if are there you? are students <clears throat> who are choosing a different bathroom, we're not blocking them from bathrooms. That's your question. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. Is there any other public input? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I will close public input and um, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. Excuse me. Other business, please. There is no other business. I have some. There, it's not, it's not on the agenda, agenda guy. An agenda review was earlier. I would have added something to the agenda when we did a gender review, but there's no other business. And I know about that, I would have posted it. Uh, well, next meeting, um, or you can definitely call me before the next meeting and let me know what you want to add to the agenda and we can discuss right. it. No problem. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Just real quick, I just want to thank Rufio for hosting us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So would someone make a motion to I'm adjourn? Second. second. Motion by Charlene, seconded mm -hmm. by Dr. Beth. Mm -hmm. Is there any mm -hmm. discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, Kathy, would you call the roll? Yes. 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 Dana? Yes. Mary? Yes. Dr. Beth? Yes. And Brady? Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.